Hi, I'm Emily. Before I dive into what happened, please like and subscribe for more on how I turned my darkest hour into my greatest victory. Let's get started. Lying in the stark white hospital room, the beeping of the heart monitor was the only thing confirming I was still here, still fighting. The surgery had taken its toll. Every breath was a reminder of the battle my body was enduring. The scent of antiseptic hung heavy, mingling with the faint aroma of flowers from a bouquet my sister had brought earlier, trying to brighten the sterile environment. The door creaked, jolting me back from my haze. Mark walked in, his face unreadable. The sight of him should have been comforting, but the tightness of his lips told another story. Emily, we need to talk. His voice was cold, lacking the warmth it used to have when he'd comfort me in times of need. What's wrong, Mark? Shouldn't you be at work? The words barely left my lips as I tried to sit up, wincing from the pain. He didn't answer right away. Instead, he paced briefly before stopping at the foot of my bed. I'm leaving you, Emily. He slid the divorce papers across the small hospital table. Leaving? I don't... I just had surgery. What are you talking about? It's not just that I'm leaving. I've... met someone else. Her name is Lisa. Each word stung the pain in my abdomen now competing with the sharp betrayal slicing through my heart. You're leaving me for someone else? Now? After ten years, this is how you do it? Tears pooled, blurring the stark white of the room. Yes, I am. I can't do this anymore. I need someone who can give me what I want. What I need. Lisa can do that. Mark's voice was firm, his decision clear. But I just had surgery. We were supposed to fight this together. How can you do this now? My voice broke, the reality setting in. Emily, I'm sorry, but my mind is made up. I wish you the best with your recovery. He didn't look back as he walked out, the finality in his steps echoing off the walls. Left alone, the sound of my sobs mixed with the beeping of the monitor. But as the door clicked shut, a fierce determination rose within me. Wiping away tears, I whispered to the empty room, This isn't the end for me. It's just the beginning. I knew then what I had to do. I had to heal, not just from the surgery, but from the betrayal. I had to understand why Mark did what he did. But more importantly, I needed to ensure he didn't just walk away without facing any consequences. Revenge wasn't just a thought. It was a promise to myself. As I lay there, plans began to form. I would rise from this, stronger and more determined than ever. Mark and his new love, Lisa, would learn that my spirit wasn't broken by their deceit. They would learn that underestimating Emily was their first mistake. As the days blurred together in the quiet of my recovery, the numbness from Mark's betrayal slowly morphed into a burning need for answers. Every memory, every sweet nothing he had ever whispered, now seemed a potential clue to the deception I had lived. One afternoon, I decided to sift through our shared files, tax returns, bank statements, anything that could shed light on when Mark started straying. What I found was more shocking than I had prepared myself for. Flipping through the pages, a bank statement caught my eye. There were withdrawals, large sums, all funneling into an account I didn't recognize. As I dug deeper, tracing the transactions, the pieces began to click together. Money funneled not just to a secret account, but directly to what I assumed was Lisa's. This wasn't just about infidelity. This was fraud. I couldn't do this alone. I needed a team. A solid one. First, I called Sarah, my best friend since college, and now a sharp-witted lawyer. Next, I brought in Tony, a tech wizard who could trace even the most discreet digital footprints. And last, Jane, a private investigator known for unraveling the naughtiest affairs. Emily, we're here for you. Let's take this jerk down, Sarah declared as we sat around my kitchen table, documents and laptops strewn about. We need to gather all the evidence, follow the money trail, and tie him directly to the transactions. Tony, can you track down where all these transactions are coming from? I asked, pointing to the suspicious withdrawals. On it, Emily. I'll trace the IP addresses, see if they lead back to Mark or Lisa. Shouldn't be too hard to crack, Tony replied, his fingers already flying over his keyboard. And I'll start digging into Lisa's background, see what kind of skeletons she's got in her closet. People like her usually leave a trail, Jane added, her eyes sharp with determination. As the evening wore on, our plan took shape. We weren't just going to expose Mark. We were going to make sure he felt the full weight of the law for every deceitful transaction. Emily, whatever we find, we're with you. 
We'll make sure he can't just walk away from this. Not without paying for what he's done, Sarah reassured me. I nodded, feeling the strength of my friends buoying my resolve. Mark picked the wrong woman to betray, I said, a cold fire building within me. This was more than just about getting even. It was about justice, about reclaiming my life and dignity. And as we formed our pact, I knew this was just the beginning. Mark and Lisa were about to discover they had unleashed a storm, one that wouldn't end until justice had swept them away. The community center was bustling. The local elite gathered for the annual Civic Achievement Awards. Tonight, Mark was to be honored, a plaque ready to commend his integrity and community service. The irony wasn't lost on me as I adjusted my dress, the weight of the documents in my purse grounding me. Sarah, Tony, and Jane were scattered around the room, blending in with the crowd. We had one shot at this, and everything needed to go perfectly. As Mark stepped up to receive his award, applause filling the room, I took a deep breath and moved towards the front. This was it. Just as Mark took the microphone, my voice surprisingly steady. I'm sorry to interrupt this celebration, but there are a few things you all need to know about this man. The crowd murmured, eyes wide as they turned between Mark and me. Mark looked at me, shock and fury warring in his eyes. These are not just accusations. I have here bank statements, emails, evidence of Mark's financial fraud and his affair, evidence that shows his true character, I said, holding up the documents for all to see. This is ridiculous. Emily is just bitter about our divorce. Don't listen to her. But I was ready. Is it, Mark? Is that why these bank transactions show you funneling our money to an account in Lisa's name? Or why there's a paper trail of your affair that dates back months? Tony projected the documents on the screen. The evidence was undeniable. The transactions, the romantic emails, all laid bare. The room erupted into chaos, whispers growing louder. In the midst of it, Lisa, who had been standing at the back, her face went white. She looked at Mark, betrayal written across her features before she stormed out, her exit nearly as dramatic as the revelations. Mark tried to speak, to salvage his crumbling facade, but the evidence was overwhelming. As people started to turn away from him, his eyes met mine, a mixture of anger and defeat. The police arrived shortly after, a quiet conversation ensuing before they escorted Mark away. The image of him, head bowed as he passed by the crowd he once charmed, was more satisfying than I had imagined. As he disappeared into the back of the police car, Sarah came over, her smile wide. You did it, Emily. You really did it. I nodded, the adrenaline beginning to ebb, leaving a profound sense of relief in its wake. Mark's deception is finally out, and Lisa saw his true colors too. Tonight, the mask Mark had worn so well was gone, and my journey towards justice had taken a crucial step forward. The fight wasn't over yet, but this victory was sweet, and it was only the beginning. The courthouse hummed with anticipation as I sat beside Sarah, feeling every pulse of the crowded room. Reporters had gathered like storm clouds, cameras poised for the drama that was about to unfold. When Mark shuffled in, his swagger replaced by a slump of defeat, a murmur swept through the crowd. The judge called the court to order, and the room fell silent, charged with the weight of impending justice. Sarah stood, her voice resonant as she addressed the jury. Ladies and gentlemen, what we present today is not just a tale of personal betrayal, but a clear case of calculated fraud that shattered my client's life. We have evidence, hard evidence, that will show Mark's true intentions. Mark's lawyer tried to interrupt. Your Honor, we contend that these accusations are grossly exaggerated. Exaggerated? Sarah cut in, her tone sharp. We'll let the evidence speak for itself. Tony stepped up, each click of his laptop echoing in the courtroom as he projected emails and bank statements onto the screen. These transactions were cleverly hidden but traceable. Here's the proof of funds transferred to a private account. Coincidentally, right after meetings with the co-defendant, Lisa. The crowd shifted, whispers filling the air as the evidence mounted. It was then Mark's turn to defend himself. His voice was shaky, a stark contrast to his once confident demeanor. These transactions, they were misunderstood. I was moving funds for, for an investment opportunity. An investment? Sarah challenged, raising an eyebrow. An investment in betrayal and theft? As I stood, the room's eyes bore into me, but my voice was steady. I found these documents accidentally, looking for our tax returns. What I discovered was a trail of lies, 
of money meant for our future, spent on a secret life with another woman. As the jury deliberated, the tension was palpable. Hours later, they returned, their faces solemn. We find the defendant, Mark, guilty of all charges. The judge nodded gravely, ready to pass sentence. Given the severity of these actions, I am sentencing you to five years in prison and ordering a restitution payment to Emily, acknowledging the financial and emotional damages inflicted. As Mark was led away, his last glance my way was a mix of remorse and disbelief, but there was no satisfaction in his downfall. Only the weight of justice served. Outside, the reporters swarmed. How do you feel about the verdict? One shouted. I paused, then said firmly, Today's verdict is a testament to the truth. It's a victory, not just for me, but for everyone who's ever been wronged like this. May it be a lesson that truth and justice do prevail. As I walked away, the weight of years seemed to lift. The chapter of Mark was closed, but my new chapter, one of strength and new beginnings, was just starting to write itself. Months had passed since the trial, and the shift in my life was palpable. With the financial settlement, I founded Resilience Rising, a foundation dedicated to supporting women who faced betrayal and trauma. It was more than just a new beginning. It was a mission. At the foundation's first major event, the room was filled with hopeful faces, eager to find strength in shared stories. As I prepared backstage, David, who had been a pillar of support through my darkest times, was there, as always, making sure everything was perfect. You're doing amazing things, Emily, David said, his smile warm and reassuring. Thanks to you being here. I couldn't have gotten this far without your support, I replied, feeling a flutter of something more than friendship between us. Hey, I believe in what you're doing, and I believe in you, David said, his eyes holding mine a moment longer than usual. It was time for my speech, and as I stepped up to the podium, the applause was encouraging. I looked out at the audience, my heart full, Today marks not just the launch of resilience rising, but a celebration of strength, of overcoming, and of new beginnings. Each of us here has faced moments that could have broken us, but instead, they forged us into the warriors we are today. The crowd listened intently, some nodding, others with tears glistening in their eyes. I stand before you not just as a survivor of betrayal, but as a testament to the power of truth and justice. We each hold the power to rewrite our stories, to rise from the ashes of our pain and emerge stronger, more empowered. Murmurs of agreement swept through the room as I continued. To anyone out there still struggling, let this be your beacon. You are not alone. Together, we rise. As the event wound down, the feedback was overwhelmingly positive. Women approached, sharing hugs and stories, thankful for a place that understood their pain and offered hope. David came up. You moved them, Emily. You moved me. I smiled, grateful for his presence. Seems like we're both moving forward, huh? Yeah, about that. David hesitated, then took a deep breath. I've been wondering if maybe, after everything settles, you'd like to go out, just the two of us? I considered his offer, the new life I was building. I think I'd like that, I said, realizing I was ready to explore this new possibility. As the crowd thinned and the night ended, I stood looking out at the city lights, feeling a profound peace. Mark was a chapter closed, his memory fading into a lesson learned. Now, my path was clear, lit by the promise of new endeavors, and perhaps a new love. Resilient, empowered, and free, I was ready to face whatever came next with open arms. Emily has shown incredible resilience and strength, founding Resilience Rising to support women who've experienced similar betrayals. But here's a thought to consider. Should individuals always seek public justice for personal betrayals? Or are there times when private healing is more beneficial? What do you think? Share your views in the comments below. If you enjoyed this story and want more content like this, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Your support helps us bring more stories of empowerment and resilience to light.